let's face it, it doesn't matter whether you're a big time racer or whether you're a small town hero. Sponsorships are how we survive and we do racing these days. And I'm no different. Whether it's the Redneck Computer Geek channel with 148,000 subscribers or whether it's RCG Racing, I do it with sponsorships. Duramax has been an amazing sponsor to both of the channels, but I'd like you guys' input on how you might have decided to build out engines. And I'm going to tell you the requirements of the sponsorship, and you can give me some build ideas for next year that we can use in order to continue this process and be able to build bigger and better, or maybe roll back and do a mediocre, uh, medium build that I didn't think of or chose to skip over this time. So here's the deal. Two engines, $2,000, but you had to maintain as many stock parts as possible while building up through the season. That is a very hard thing to do because your very first instinct as an engine builder is to grab the $2,000 and buy $2,000 worth of extreme parts and go, wha-bam, engine, done, season over. But that wouldn't have made for very good content, nor would it have given stepping stones for people to follow based on what their requirements were for their build or what they wanted to do with a Duramax 208. Which, while we're talking about it, the Duramax 208 is based off a Ducar 212 block. So the crank and cam are Honda, but the connecting rod and piston are Ducar 212 based. The head seems to be some sort of Honda Ducar merger. It's not, it doesn't seem to be the same as a Dynocam 212 head, but it also doesn't seem to be exactly the same as most of the Rado and the other clone heads. So I honestly think it's its own standoff, but it seems to be very compatible. We'll talk about that compatibility in a further part of this video. So, had to maintain stock for as long as possible, stock parts for as long as possible. And also, you had to work with people that openly advertised for the Duramax engine, which massively, massively limited who I could order from. Basically, that puts me at NR Racing and a little tiny bit of OMB Warehouse. I'm really glad that put me with working with NR Racing. They have been hands down the best people to work with, without question. If you are calling in in order to ask questions or you are writing out questions to their Facebook Messenger or something like that, they have been hands down absolutely amazing to work with because I know a lot, but I didn't know a lot about this when I started, and they were massively key to doing this project. Now, let's get back to building out engines. So, I wanted to build out about five to six variants of the engine on a $2,000 budget and maintaining stock parts for as long as possible progressively through the builds, replacing things with bigger, better parts. So stock is pretty simple. You throw it on the bike, you go down the drag strip, you're at 3,600 RPM, it sucks, you look like a moron on the drag strip and you do 17 miles per hour in an eighth of a mile. And then you no longer talk about it because it just sucked, but that was a requirement of sponsorship, was start with a baseline. Now, you get to have some fun. Make stock parts do as much as possible without getting internal to the engine. 
So we did a stage one intake off of Amazon. We grabbed some Yamato jets off of Amazon. That kit is killer. That Yamato kit that has um, the emulsion tube upgrade, which did work, by the way. I've seen a bunch of different people go back and forth about whether the Amazon upgraded 140 emulsion kits are actually worth it. That one actually did cause an increase in our engine. So I do want to give them a shout out and I'll post a link to that. If you're doing stock work with the stock carburetor, totally worth it, that kit. Link in the description below. Um, so we did the stage one. We did the 28 millimeter exhaust that Jesse thought was pretty because I wanted to use an exhaust that somebody would buy as a starter exhaust. They weren't necessarily looking for the best boom tube, but they were looking for something that looked decent and would get it out past where your leg was going to sit. So we went with the 28, and we managed to go and get some massive increases out of the engine without ever getting internal. We did the zip tie governor delete and all of the fun stuff. So then we took stock and we staged it up one stage and we ordered up from nr racing their um rattlesnake cam and the rattlesnake cam is basically a stock that has a better duration but is not a mod 2 so mod 2 is known to break stock rods in many engines so it was a there was no reason to go to a mod 2 and deliberately break stuff when we could go to the rattlesnake for 40 bucks we took the rattlesnake we stuck some 18 pound valve springs on it we stuck some 22 pound valve springs on it 18 to 22 really honestly didn't make any difference for us so i don't know whether that might have seen a difference if we had a switch to a vm22 carb or better yet, maybe a PWK-22 variant. Not sure there. Comment down below. Do you think the VM-22 should have been done? Or whether I was better to just wait and jump straight to the PWK-24 when I did the 252? Or the next step up that we did was we did a PVL flywheel with a Mod 2 cam and 22 pound valve springs and then we stuck in well with the rattlesnake we also stuck in the chinesium connecting rod chinesium piston flat top and we did actually see some increase there and i know from following other youtubers that people have built that out with a mod 2 cam and done really well with it so i'm not sure whether maybe we should readdress that next year i don't know do you think a mod 2 chinesium connecting rod chinesium flat top with chinesium flywheel build is actually worth poking at maybe with a vm22 on it i don't know if you were gonna do i know comment down below what you would do as a mod 2 max out budget build title it mod 2 max out budget build and then title and then another version would be mod 2 extremist build and what you think would build out the most extreme mod 2 and maybe we'll play with that next year because a lot of people are obsessed with the Mod 2 cam. A lot of people are obsessed with whether they can buy into a Mod 2 and then build it out, nickel and diming it to death. So I don't know. So for Mod 2, I wanted to stick with running with NR Racing. NR Racing has been really good to me. And so the next jump normally is a 265 cam but a lot of people like to 
go to a version made by another competitive company to NR Racing for the 265. And so I chose to stick with NR Racing and I went to their 252 cam, but I paired their 252 cam with 1.3 ratio rockers so that I could extreme the cam with stock connecting, uh, with stock push rods. And the stock push rod thing actually was not by choice. The stock push rod thing was because nobody seemed to have chromolies in stock. I don't know what was up with the last like month and a half, but nobody seemed to have chromoly push rods in stock that were in the normal stock size to a little bit longer. Um, I really would have preferred to have run chromoly push rods either stock or one size up from stock. But you got to do with what you got to do and you got to get out on that drag strip. So that's what we ran. I didn't see any reason to run the 252 with the stock carburetor because honestly, I think the stock carburetor was wholeheartedly maxed out the moment we got into the Rattlesnake and the Mod 2. The Mod 2, without question, was the very tip of the biggest of the jets out of the Yamato kit that we got, which was my indication we needed to jump to the PVL. Uh, PWK, flywheel, sorry. Acronyms everywhere. <clears throat> um, also, when we did the 252, we stuck with the PVL flywheel in this. The 292 that I screwed up on the build has the ultra light in it. And that is amazing, but it also has a weird quirk to it that I wanted to point out. Um, so we did the 252, and this is absolutely, this is beautiful. Um, it did create some case pressure so I really think this was the point that I should have been running an oil catch can. And if I was going to run this on something that was going to run for extended periods of time, this would have been my oil catch can upgrade point, without question. The 292 very much so needs an oil catch can. That pressurized the case to the point that we blew the... Um, we blew the cork, ca cork gasket out from underneath the valve cover. Um, it just plain disintegrated and blew out about our fifth run down the drag strip. So let's talk about that. The 292 cam I upgraded to, but I should have upgraded my compression. When I did the 292, I also chose to see if I could max out the stock Duramax head running the stainless steel valve kit from NR Racing. And that dropped in beautifully. But then I chose to run 37 pound valve springs because that's the entry level valve spring for a 292 cam. And we ran into a hiccup. The pocket size for valves fits a 26, but it does not fit a 37 pound valve spring. And I was not about to go and spend, I was not about to go and spend the $180 to and another $20 to overnight a valve spring pocket cutter to be able to do this build. I just wasn't going to. So I hauled out a Dremel tool or an air whatever, and I went at it. And I cut out the pocket in the most ghetto way possible, but it worked. But then I kept building further and realized I had ordered the wrong piston. 
And I should have ordered a 57 flat top. And I ordered a 55 flat top from NR Racing. And that was my screw up. And so this build ran, but it ran like dog you know what. Because it was low compression when it should have been a high compression build. My bad. Totally not on NR Racing. We also port and polished both of these heads for both of these builds. Polished, not so much. But ported, most definitely. Um, and that, again, is doable as the average Joe. And that fit within my requirements for the sponsorship. But there, I think I've talked as much as I need to or want to on the subject because I'm sure that down in the description is two types of comments. The person that saw $2,000 and immediately wrote a $2,000 engine build without listening to the video. And the person that actually listened to this video and wrote out a real build. And for those people, the second person that actually listened to the video and wrote out a real build, I appreciate you. To the copy and paste person that just went over to another page and copy and pasted an answer, thanks. You're the reason why the internet's going to hell. But anyways. Oh. Other caveat. Had to be cams that did not require modification to the block. This is a Ducar 212 variant, so you got to do a lot of Google research to figure it out could not require modifications to the block because of being scary to the average Joe to do. And that was how I ended up on the 292 cam. That choice actually was less about NR racing and more about finding a whole bunch of arguments about whether a 308 cam required block modification or not. Now, I'm not saying a 308 wouldn't have been the right choice. I'm just saying that it makes people skittish. Okay, that's enough babbling. Have out in the comments section, and I appreciate all of you for sponsoring this season. We're not done with these engines. One of them may end up rebuilt as the Chineseium build over on Redneck Computer Geek for a project. The other one, depending on what kind of stuff transpires for this winter, may or may not end up as an ice racing build, depending on what happens. All right. Have fun, everyone.